Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. Tonight, Jupiter is going to be in opposition and the great red spot will be visible and there's going to be a transit of one of Jupiter's moons, Io, across the face of Jupiter. So it's a great night to look at Jupiter. So let's look at Jupiter through my 8-inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Oh, wow. Looking good. To view Jupiter, or indeed any planet, it's best to look when it's at opposition. Opposition means that the Earth is in between the Sun and the planet, and that's when the planet will be closest to the Earth. So that's the best time to look at it, because it'll appear larger and you'll be able to make out more detail. But also, you want to look when the seeing is good and there's not a lot of turbulence in the atmosphere, which really affects your ability to see the planets well. Also, use the biggest aperture telescope you have and start off with the low magnification to center it. I just started out with 36 millimeter, so that gives me about 56 times magnification, but that's not much because you want to go to your telescope's highest useful magnification when viewing the planets. So I'm going to take this 36 millimeter out and put in a 10 millimeter. And tonight I'm going to be comparing my Ethos 10 millimeter, which I love, with this significantly cheaper <laughs> orthoscopic that I bought, which are supposed to be good for looking at the planets. It's a Botter Classic Ortho. I got a six millimeter, which might be a bit much for this telescope. I think. The maximum useful magnification is 300 times, and this would put me at 338, I think. But I also have a 10 millimeter ortho, and I'm going to compare it to this 10 millimeter ethos and see how it compares. So let me center this, and after a look at it, and enjoy it. Then I'm going to put a camera on here and try to make some video and a picture. Okay, so wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that looks really good. Really good. Wow. There's not much turbulence. It's looking good. All right, that looks good. Let's see how this little ortho, it was, I mean, pretty cheap for an eyepiece. It was only $89. I'm not even going to tell you how much this ethos was. It was a lot. Okay, it looks good. The orthoscopics have a much narrower field of view. This ethos is 100 degrees, and I, I'm sorry, I can't remember what it is on here, but I, I want to say it's 40, so not much of a field of view, but it looks good. I, I would say it's worth $89. Wow, there's very little turbulence. This looks really good. I can't really say anything about the sharpness changing. I mean, field of view is definitely bigger with this eyepiece. Um, orthos are supposed to be ideal for planetary viewing, but I think my ethos is sharper, but it's pretty good for an $89 eyepiece. So next we're going to put a camera on here so I can try to show you <laughs> Jupiter 
with a shadow transit and the great red spot. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and the largest planet in our solar system with a radius of over 43,000 miles, 11 times wider than Earth. It was named for the Roman god Jupiter, the counterpart to the Greek god Zeus. Jupiter is so massive that it's twice the mass of all the other planets in our solar system combined. And it's a gas giant, meaning it doesn't really have a surface. It's just swirling gases and liquids. The atmosphere is basically cloud layers extending 44 miles. The top cloud is most likely ammonia ice. The middle layer is ammonium hydrosulfide crystals. And the innermost layer is water, ice, and vapor. The beautiful stripes that we see on Jupiter from Earth are actually cold, windy clouds of ammonia and water, and most likely sulfur and phosphorus-containing gases. Jupiter spins very quickly on its own axis, with one day lasting under 10 hours. Because it spins so quickly, it has strong jet streams moving in opposite directions that separate the clouds into dark bands and bright belts. The Great Red Spot is an enormous storm, twice as wide as Earth, that has been raging for hundreds of years. Jupiter is mostly composed of hydrogen and helium, the same components of stars. But when forming, um, it didn't get quite massive enough to ignite to become a star. But deep inside Jupiter, it's believed that the hydrogen gas is compressed into a liquid giving Jupiter the largest ocean in the solar system, but it's just made of hydrogen instead of water. Also, the hydrogen is under such pressure deep inside that the hydrogen gives off an electron, making the hydrogen ocean electrically conducive. And perhaps Jupiter's fast rotation drives the electrical currents in this region to create Jupiter's powerful magnetic, magnetic field. No one knows for sure, but it's possible that Jupiter has a solid core made of iron at over 90,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Jupiter takes 12 years to orbit one time around the sun, and Jupiter averages 484 million miles from the sun. But at its farthest, Jupiter is 508 million miles, and at its closest, or at perihelion, 460 million miles. Tonight, it's at 462 million miles from the sun, so it's pretty close and a great night to look at Jupiter. The four moons around Jupiter are called the Galilean moons because they were discovered by Galileo, and you can see them with binoculars. They're Ganymede, Callisto, Europa, and Io. But Jupiter has about 95 moons, maybe more. Sometimes you can see the shadow of one of Jupiter's moons as it crosses the face of Jupiter, and tonight is one of those nights. Io will be transiting Jupiter, and also the Great Red Spot will be visible tonight. So let's have a look at Jupiter <laughs> in my 8-inch Meech Mitt Cassegrain telescope. It looked great in the eyepiece. I hope it looks as good when I put this camera on here. I'm going to use a two-time Barlow. I'm going to stick it in the diagonal because it makes it a lot easier <laughs> to focus it. I, I will do both to see if it's degraded at all. And I'm going to connect it to my computer and um, hopefully <laughs> that looks good and I'll show you what the results are. Let me get that fired up and I'll be right back. Okay, here's what Jupiter looks like on my laptop. And if you're interested in the equipment I'm using, I'm using my 8-inch Meechmit Cassegrain LX85, and I'm using a ZWO ASI 585MC camera, and I just have it attached to my Dell laptop, and I'm using SharpCap. I'm going to have to adjust, be right back. So this is just how Jupiter appears in SharpCap, and then I haven't captured anything yet. I just need to hit the capture and collect a couple of minutes of video and then if I get some good video I'll make a picture. <laughs> wow! That is so cool! 
I can't stop looking at it. I love shadow transits. I haven't seen one for a very long time. And even though I know how it's going to end, just like a thriller movie, I can't stop watching it because I want to see what's going to happen when it gets next to the limb. And it's just about to pass the limb. And then it comes out and it looks like Jupiter has a pimple. I just love it. And what's even cooler, which I haven't seen, is a double shadow transit. There was one recently, but it was cloudy that night, so I missed it. But if you ever see an alert for a double shadow transit, be sure to catch that because if it's as good as a single transit, it has to be awesome. So I'll show you my picture that I made from my video of the Great Red Spot and an IO Shadow Transit. Beautiful. And that concludes this presentation on Let's Look at Jupiter at Opposition. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.